All right, so the last session we were discussing about variable velocity, that's where we stopped. And I wanted to, uh, I in fact discussed about variable velocity and uh, the, the, the way we define variable velocity uh, was where, uh, you know, if, if a body covers, a body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time in a specified direction, that means the direction is not changed, the same direction, right? Uh, let me just increase it a little more. All right. And then you have the other thing where or equal distances are covered in equal intervals, but the direction is changing. Now, what does this really mean? Now, I did explain it a little bit, but I want to explain it a little more to give that clarity on what I meant. So I'll just uh, clear this and okay. So what did I mean? Now, so um, when I when I have uh, something moving in a straight line, so here it's moving in a straight line. Assume this is a straight line. Okay, I know that it is not really coming as a straight line. So it's a straight line. So this is a rectilinear motion, rectilinear motion. In this case, you know. Probably uh, first one second it has moved five meters and the next one second it has moved ten meters, for example. So this is unequal uh, uh, unequal distance uh, uh, displacements in the same interval of time. The other situation is that you know it is moving through a curvilinear uh, kind of motion, where um, the first one second it moved one second it moved probably. Uh, four meters next one second also it I it might have moved the distance traveled the distance travel could be four meters four meters so speed if you look at the speed in both these cases is four meters per second speed is four meters per second right that's the speed but what about the velocity the velocity cannot be told so why because the direction has changed so here, the, there was a one specific direction, and here there's a different direction. So that means the velocity has changed, even though, even though, speed is equal, right? And so in the curvilinear, so this is a this is like a, this is a curvilinear motion, curvilinear motion. So when there's a curvilinear motion, always the velocity is changing or we have a velo variable velocity because the direction of the velocity is changing continuously. And since the direction of the velocity is changing continuously, you basically say that it's a variable velocity. So this is this is what I want to actually tell you about uh, the variable velocity. I think I did explain that uh, before, but um, you know, I just want to PNG one save. Okay, so uh, I'll just clear this and go back to the presentation. Now I want to quickly show you a video. Right uh, here, you can see a video here, and I think probably you might have seen this uh, before. Right, this is actually a circus where they show this kind of uh, what do you call motorbike stunts. Now you can see that these motorbikes are going round and round, right? Now, in fact, if you look at the speed of these motorcycles, probably the speeds are not different, right? So the speeds are not changing. So uh, if you look at the speed of, let me just ask them to move. So if you look at the speeds, So you've seen that, right? Now, if you look at, let me just stop this, all right? Now, if you look at the speeds, if you look at the speeds, speeds at which these bikes were moving, moving, right? They may not be, they have been equal, right? So the, the speeds might be, may be equal, maybe uh, equal or that means that is that the the it is uniform speed uniform speed 
of course initially it would have been rest and it may be uniform speed but so if he looks at the speedometer if he looks at the speedometer of the bike he may see that okay my speed is not changing but but velocity is changing velocity is changing because changing because he is in a curvilinear motion uh, bikes are in a curvilinear motion curvilinear motion right so the bikes are in a curvilinear motion so the velocity the direction of velocity is continuously changing i just want to go back and rewind and show you once again right so you can see that it is moving in uniform speed but it is not uniform velocity because it is in a curvilinear motion going round and round and so continuously the direction is changing and since the direction is changing the velocity is different right so here is a right example which i can show where the uh, there is a uniform speed condition but a variable velocity condition right so please understand the difference between speed and velocity i'm sure this example would have actually uh, shown you that so speeds are the same so if he looks at the speedometer um, the speedometer of uh, the bike he may see the same speed right but um, you know uh, the the velocity is continuously changing because he's in a curvilinear motion and his direction is continuously changing i hope that uh, that kind of makes it clear uh, what this means All right. So going back, oops, sorry. So let us go back to the presentation. Uh, so I hope now the variable speed and variable velocity concepts are are very clear, right? And uh, let us go forward. Now, what is average velocity? Average velocity is equal to average speed. So I find the average displacement, right, of a body per unit time. What does this mean? right so what does average uh, speed mean right so let me sorry go back here so what does average speed mean so consider that um, you know body is in a rectilinear motion so uh, you know it's it's moving in a straight line it's a rectilinear motion right so it's in a straight rectilinear motion and uh, first uh, one second it moved uh, it, it had a displacement of four meters and uh, second next second it had a displacement of three meters now what is the average velocity average velocity is equal to the average displacement per unit time how do you find the average displacement what is the total displacement total displacement total displacement divided by total time total time and what is the total displacement here is 4 plus 4 plus 3 and the total time is 2 seconds and so it is 7 by 3 7 by 2 which is equal to 3.5 meter per second so that is the average velocity now please understand that I have only considered rectilinear motion here where the 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 direction is not changing direction not changing if the direction is changing then there are other ways of taking care of it right so you may be having a situation where both are four meter per second but the direction is changing then there are ways of taking care of it we have to look at uh, the components of the velocity and find the difference and all that so it's a little more involving so we are not getting to that because that requires you to know trigonometry oh man oh now this this person who's teaching me is telling maths and physics are going together absolutely right they are hand in hand go together right so if you want to get into um, the situations where directions are changing I'm saying you have to learn trigonometry right and uh, you learn that cos theta sin theta sec theta cos sec theta tan theta and cotec theta and uh, all that stuff all these things you will learn uh, later on in uh, in probably in eighth standard and then you will also learn how to find components of velocity components of uh, force and so on very interesting we'll learn that later but right now since you don't know that you don't worry about it you only think about rectilinear motion where there's no change in direction but also think that if there is a change in direction then also the velocity 
is changing right so uh, but and this is how you can find the average velocity find the total displacement divided by total time and then you kind of uh, so the difference is here you're considering displacement not the distance traveled so in, in average speed you consider the distance traveled but in average velocity you consider the average displacement right so here you found that displacement for first second is four meters second second is uh, th three meters right and then you found total displacement by total time and that gives you the average velocity i hope this is is very simple and it's clear right all right now uh now what is acceleration wow this is an interesting concept what is acceleration now you found you talked about variable speed that means the velocity can change right that is what is variable speed the velocity can change right so if the velocity is changing there is acceleration now acceleration could be uh, you kind of have notion of acceleration and deceleration the if you are incre if there is increase in velocity then there is acceleration right now you get into um, uh, a, a car right first the car is in the state of rest the the driver uh, uh, you know st uh, turns the key on and that leads to the starter motor working and uh, hazard things happening and the engine starts right and once the engine starts he, he you know uh, puts pr presses the clutch puts in the first gear and presses the accelerator and at that point what is happening your car starts moving that means car initially the state of rest had a velocity of zero right because it's not moving zero meter per second and now the car is slowly gaining velocity right or you say speed uh, but you assume that the car is moving in a, in the same in the same direction on a straight road it's a reclinia motion so you can say that it the the distance traveled is equal to the displacement right because you are you're traveling in a straight line and so you can say that the velocity is now slowly increasing and what the speedometer is showing is in fact the the slowly increasing velocity so your velocity is increasing and so it was zero meter per second now probably it has become two meter per second maybe five meter per second and so on as you accelerate so now you have a situation of acceleration where velocity is changing right now uh, let, let us go back to the whiteboard and discuss this a little more further right so consider that um, now so this is your car right so with my limited knowledge of drawing So this is your car, right, and with windows. And initially, car was a state of rest. So your velocity was equal to zero meter per second because it was not moving. Now, all these driver did all these things. He started the engine and then pressed the clutch, put the first gear and presses, pressed the acceleration and the car started moving, right? and so the velocity is increasing now assume assume that after 30 seconds after 30 seconds that is half a minute the car was moving at 30 kilometers per hour right so now after 30 seconds this car was moving at so after 30 seconds so this is the time pass so after this much time passed car has moved through some distance forget about that right the the velocity velocity he looked at the, the speedometer and found it's 30 kilometers per hour and we have to convert this into um uh, you know meter per second so which is 30 into 1000 divided by 60 into 60 right uh, these two zeros goes off and uh, this cuts to 5 so you're saying 50 by 6 which will be which will be 8.3 meter per second so in 30 seconds the car's velocity changed from 0 to 30 meter per second 
and so what is the acceleration acceleration so the velocity is rate of change of motion and acceleration acceleration is rate of change of velocity acceleration is rate of change of velocity so in this case acceleration acceleration will be equal to 8.3 minus 0 divided by 30 right uh, maybe uh, before let me just try to write the uh, f formula first and then we will uh, write the numbers right so um, it is initial velocity uh, final velocity final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken for this change in velocity right time taken for this change in velocity so what's final velocity is 8.3 initial velocity is 0 time turn taken is 30 so it is 8.3 divided by 30 which will be 0 0.83 by 3 right which would be 0 0.2 uh, and 2 will be 623.7 something right so it will be 0 0.27 meter per second squared so the unit of uh, acceleration is meter per second squared why what is the reason what is there in the numerator is meter per second meter per second right and denominator is second so what what will you do multiply second here multiply second here this second the second cancels we get meter by second squared second to second is second squared right I know that uh, you know you're aware of it I uh, because it is simple exponent I'm sure that you've learned exponents in mathematics so here you found the acceleration of the car the acceleration of car is 0 0.27 meter per second squared and how do you what is acceleration acceleration is rate of change of velocity it is rate of change of velocity and which is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken. Now, is it that always acceleration can be, um, is it that always final velocity is more than initial velocity? No, it's not necessary. Right? Now, consider a situation where the same car in 30 seconds, in 30 seconds, the same car, somebody applies brake the applies brake and so what happens after 30 seconds the same car assume that oops assume that after 30 seconds the same car came to the rest so velocity became 0 meter per second 0 meter per second right so velocity became 0 meter per second so after 30 seconds, somebody applied brake or didn't press accelerator, did something and the, veloc the velocity, it came to take into rest. It stopped. So velocity becomes 0 meter per second. So now what is, what is the acceleration? If you look at this here, the acceleration in this case, uh, acceleration has become 0 minus 30 initial final velocity is 0, initial velocity is 30 divided by 30, which is minus minus oh sorry uh, uh, not 30 I'm sorry 8.3 right because uh, 30 kilometers per hour which is uh, 8.3 meter per second so 0 minus 8.3 divided by 30 which is minus 8.3 divided by 30 which is equal to zero, minus 0 0.27 meter per second squared now what does this minus mean what does this minus mean minus means it's deceleration the velocity is reduced so it is not in fact acceleration this is deceleration deceleration why because the velocity in fact is reduced it is not increased so it's not always necessary the velocity is increasing it could be also the velocity is reducing right so if velocity is increasing it's called acceleration and so it's positive right and if velocity is decreasing it is deceleration or it is negative acceleration 
right? Negative acceleration. So acceleration is in minus. Why? Because the final velocity is less than initial velocity and so the numerator becomes negative and so you're getting a negative acceleration which is also called deceleration. I hope this is very clear and very simple, right? All right, uh, let me just quickly save this. Uh, say T2, save. Okay, now I'll clear this and we will go forward. Okay, so let us look at uh, acceleration, excuse me. Sorry for that. Uh, okay, let's continue. All right. So uh, let us just go through this uh, this particular slide and say what they're saying. So as I told you, acceleration is not nothing but rate of change, rate of change of velocity. That's what acceleration is, right? So which means you have a variable velocity condition, variable velocity, where the velocity is changing and the acceleration is a measure in which measure of that change, measure of that change, right? Okay, now if velocity of a uh, body is u meter per second, which is the initial velocity, right? So u meter per second is the initial velocity, initial velocity. And after t seconds, it becomes v, v meter per second, which is the final velocity after t, right? So the acceleration is v minus u by t, right? v minus u by t is the acceleration. So which basically means I can find the final velocity if I know the, the acceleration time and the initial velocity. Now, how do I, how did I do that? A is equal to V minus U by T. I can multiply T on both sides, right? Right? And so I get uh, V minus U is equal to A T, right? So because these two T's cancel. And then what I can do is I can take, trans do transposition of U to on the other side. And so you get V is equal to U plus A T. Simple linear equation funda, which I've used. If you have gone through my linear equations uh, video, you will know what I've done and how I simplified. Pretty simple, okay? Now, how, what is the unit of SI unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. And I explained uh, just now when I took the example, how I got meter per second squared, 
right? Because meter per second is what is in the numerator divided by second. So meter per second divided by second will give meter per second squared. Uh, if it is a CGS unit, that is the centimeter gram second unit, which is not that popular. In fact, SI is the most popular uh, units used in science. So uh, usually will only come across meter per second squared, but you know, CGS, it is centimeter per second squared. So uh, important formulae that you have to remember, A is equal to V minus U by T and V is equal to U plus AT. Right. I hope that you understood uh, these two things. Pretty simple. We'll do a few problems, which will uh, which will make it very clear uh, what this means. Right. All right. So that is what is acceleration. Now. Uh, let us go back to simple pendulum and, and let us get into a little more details. I know that we discussed about simple pendulums when we discussed about time and uh, discussed about the devices which are used for measuring time. So I know that uh, you are kind of clear about a uh, simple pendulum and how it works. So uh, I know that uh, you have already looked at uh, uh, you have un you have kind of we have just discussed about what simple temp pendulum is. We'll just get into a terminologies related to simple pendulum to make us better understand. Now, what is simple pendulum? Simple pendulum is nothing but a small metallic bob tied to a light thread suspended from a rigid point such that it can freely oscillate about its mean position, um, and that is what is simple pendulum. Uh, I I know that you are already aware of that. Uh, this we have already uh, kind of. Discuss. So this is the rigid point, right? And uh, then I can use a, a thread, right? And then I can kind of, uh, you know, this is my metal bob. It's my metal bob, right? And uh, now I want to actually explain some terminologies here. Now, so that you can freely oscillate. Right now, when you are saying freely oscillate, it is a repetitive motion. We have already discussed the type of um, in the types of motion. We have already looked at oscillation, and which is nothing but a repeated motion about a mean position. Now, what is the mean position here? Mean position is this. This is a mean position. This is a mean position, right? Now, uh, and uh, now let us look at uh, where this this goes right so it goes here right and then it goes here right so both ways it oscillates and this is my path of oscillation right which is a curvilinear motion in fact so the bob is moving through a curvilinear motion right and uh, so this is my path of oscillation and I repeatedly follow this the bob if it repeatedly follows this is a path of oscillation Now, um, now this is my mean position and this is my extreme position, right? So this is the extreme position. Now, the amount of distance moving, which is which, it, which the bob is moving from the, um, the, uh, the mean position, right? The amount of distance it is moving. This is basically the amplitude, amplitude of oscillation amplitude of oscillation right so this is amplitude of oscillation and uh, the time which time required for uh, for pendulum to complete one full oscillation Full oscillation is what? Going this way, coming back, going this way, coming back. That is one full oscillation. Oscillation about, about, uh, about its mean position, about its mean position is its period of oscillation. Its period of oscillation. So, based on the pendulum, the period of oscillation could be different. Right. So, and I can tell you what is it really depend on. The period of oscillation is, is dependent on the length of the pendulum. The more the length of the pendulum, more will be its period. Longer the the length. So, this is the length of the pendulum. Right. So, this is the length of the pendulum. 
right? So this is the length. This is the length of the pendulum. More that length, more is the period. And I will actually tell you that later on, right? Uh, there is a there is a relationship between the length and the period, and I will tell you that what that relationship is. Don't worry much about it. But only thing you should worry is if the length of the pendulum is increased, its period will increase. That is the fact that you should remember. As far as you remember that fact, that's all what matters, right? Okay. Now uh, let me clear this. And let us just get into a few terminologies as far as the pendulum is concerned, right? So a simple pendulum, um, the, the various terminologies in the simple pendulum is, is there here, right? Uh, mean position, which, uh, which is the rest position. That means if it's the pendulum is freely suspended, when it is freely suspended, pendulum takes a rest position and that is what is called the mean position. Right. So if I freely suspend uh, the the pendulum uh, from the rigid point, where where what is its rest position? That is the mean position. Right. Now, what is the extreme position when the bob is at the maximum distance from the mean position? I, I also showed that in the diagram. Right. So the bob is at the maximum distance from the mean position. And that is what is the extreme position. What is the amplitude? The maximum displacement of the bob from the mean position. Again, I explained that the maximum displacement. Don't think it is distance traveled. It is a displacement. So please remember that. So that is the the uh, the the smallest distance, right, from the extreme point to the mean position. So that is the displacement. So maximum displacement of the bob from the mean position is the amplitude, the amplitude of oscillation, right? And length of the pendulum is the point, the length from, uh, from to the middle, the center of the bob to the rigid point, right? Center of the bottom of the rigid point is the, the length of the pendulum. Oscillation is one complete to and fro motion of the pendulum about the mean position. That is what is oscillation, right? So complete to and fro motion about uh, its mean position. That is what is oscillation. And period of oscillation is the time taken, time taken for an oscillation. That is what is the period. And frequency, what is frequency? If, as you, <coughs> so how many oscillations does it complete per second? Right. So how many oscillations, number of oscillations completed per second? That is what is the frequency. So so we have looked at what is frequency, what is a period, what doesn't what does oscillation mean, what is its amplitude, what is the mean position, all these are terminologies related to a simple pendulum, which I think you should be aware of, right? And uh, that kind of helps you to kind of uh, explain the simple pendulum better because these are the scientific terminologies that you typically use and the kind of motion in physics in physics the kind of motion a pendulum goes through the motion which pendulum goes through yeah it, it is also called oscillatory motion but a better uh, better precise definition is simple harmonic motion simple harmonic motion Right. Um, I know that uh, this is something that uh, you might, might not have seen in your textbook or anywhere. I'm telling you something which you're going to learn later on, probably uh, in your highest higher uh, grades. You will actually learn that this is a simple harmonic motion. OK. So that is what is simple harmonic motion. Right. So oscillatory motion, the real physics Definite, uh, the real physics term used for oscillatory motion of a pendulum is symbol harmonic motion. All right. Now, uh, all right. Now, what is the relationship between the period of oscillation and the the length of a pendulum now this formula is in fact showing that uh, the way the formula goes is as follows period t is equal to 2 pi into root of l by g now i know that you have not learned uh, what this root is right square root is something that you will not learn that is something called uh, radicals which you will be learning in mathematics later on and that is why i want i don't want you to bother about this formula don't bother about this formula. Just understand if the length of the pendulum increases, if the length of the pendulum increases, 
right, the period will increase. That's all what I want you to learn. The length of the pendulum increases, the period increases, and the second pendulum is a pendulum whose period is two seconds, right? So second pendulum has a period of two seconds, and typically the length of a second pendulum, length of a second pendulum is about hundred centimeters. Right, length of a second pendulum is around 100 uh, centimeters. And uh, so if you have a pendulum, it doesn't matter what is the mass of that bob. It may be 1 kg, 2 kg, half kg, 200 grams, whatever. It doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter. What is the mass of that bob? The only thing which matters is what is the length of the pendulum. Right? So for a second pendulum where the period of oscillation is 2 seconds, the length of the pendulum should be around about 100 centimeters. So if you have a pendulum which is 100 centimeters long, right, then the, the, the period of the pendulum will be two seconds. All right, so that is about simple pendulum, the terms of simple pendulum. Uh, and now let us get into some problems. Let us discuss some problems now, right, and that actually will bring, make our concepts a little more clear. Now, I want to also discuss about uh, some of the devices which are used, right, uh, for measurement of uh, these things. So, the odometer, odometer, odometer is a device to measure, measure uh, distance. I want to actually, in fact, show you an odometer, how it uh, looks like, um, you know, uh, let me see whether I can uh, go to the web and find. Okay, Google. Sorry. So you can see this is. Uh, so you can see here, right? This is actually a very interesting, very commonly seen dial. Haven't you seen this in your scooters, your father's scooters or, or car or, um, you know, probably uh, the, uh, let me just, uh, haven't you seen this, right? I'm sure that if you have a car or a, or a scooter, or if your father has a car or a father has your scooter or a bike, you've definitely seen this, haven't you? Right? Now, what is this? Uh, in this, there are different things, right? Uh, let me change the color to white. That will be more clear here, right? So, now, what is this? What is this? What is this needle and this dial that you're seeing? What is this? This is a speedometer. Speedometer. Right? As a, as a bike or a car moves, it talks about what is the speed at which it is moving. So this is speed of me, speedometer. So speedometer is a device used to measure speed. What about this? This is actually a odometer. Odometer. And odometer talks about what is the distance the object is moved. So for example, now the reading is 7000. Right, and assume you are in Bangalore and you've gone to Mysore, and when you reach Mysore, this becomes uh, probably 70,080. Uh, probably, if, if, assume it has traveled 80 kilometers, so it becomes 70,080. Uh, right, so this actually shows what is the distance it has traveled. So, speedometer talks about what is the current distance in which the uh, object is moving, whereas, odometer says what is the total distance of the object is moved. So this is what, so when, when you can tell your little brother or little sister or anybody who doesn't know what this is, saying this is a speedometer and what is an odometer. Okay? Excellent. Sorry. Let me just clear this. Right? Now, uh, so uh, just to go further and define, so speedo. Okay, I have to change the color to bright, bright. So speedometer, speedometer device which shows 
what is the current speed at which a body is moving that is what a speedometer is right now what is an odometer odometer talks about what is the total distance total distance traveled traveled by um, an object which could be a car or a bike or bus or whatever right so this is what the different what are two important devices you have already seen the devices used to measure time we have seen clocks watches top watch all these things right and now these are the two devices which are used for measuring speed and also the device which is used to measure the distance and you can find this in all cars bikes scooters buses any of these vehicles will have this uh, speedometer and odometer okay let me quickly save this um, so T3 save okay now uh, let me clear this and go back all right so that's about uh, speedometer and odometer which is something which I want to actually talk to you about right and uh, now we will actually get into some problems Okay, now let us do a few problems um, using all these concepts that you've learned till now. Okay, so the first problem which I wanted to, to do is is uh, is this one. The first problem I want to do is as follows: uh, a bike, um, a bike, right? is moving is moving at a velocity the bike is moving at a velocity of 5 meter per second it is accelerated it is accelerated at a rate at a rate of uh, 0 0.6 meter per second squared for 20 seconds right so initially it was moving at 5 meter per second velocity then it has been accelerated uh, due, due to a force or some way uh, and the rate of acceleration was 0 0.5 meter per second and it has been accelerated for 20 meter sec uh, 20 seconds what is the what is the final velocity velocity of the bike right so you basically know v is equal to u plus a t right and what is u here u is equal to 5 uh, a is equal to 0 0.6 and t is equal to 20 right so what I can say is v is equal to 5 plus 0 0.6 into 20 right and 0 0.6 to 20 is 12 so it becomes 17 right so so final velocity velocity is 17 meter per second right so that's pretty straightforward I just used the formula and I got the answer Okay, I just used a formula and I got the answer. All right, now uh, let us look at the next problem. Next problem. Uh, a stone, a stone was dropped, a stone was dropped from top of a building
and has a velocity has a velocity of 29.4 meter per second as it reaches the ground Calculate time it took to reach the ground. Now, what is given? What is given is um, acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity is. 9.8 meter per second squared. Now, what is this acceleration due to gravity? Now, uh, why is the ball, uh, why is that uh, stone falling down? I, I just dropped it from the building uh, uh, and uh, dropped it to the building and it is falling down. Why is it falling down? It's falling down because of gravity. Now, what is gravity? Gravity is a force applied by earth on that stone and and it is pulling it towards it right and that is a gravitational force and because of gravitational force um, which is being applied on the stone so when you are initially leaving it at the top of the building let me just draw that right so the top of the building when so this is the building and this is the ground so this is the ground right and somebody is leaving the ball uh, the stone from here and it is falling down so at this point when it is leaving, at the point when it is being left, this velocity is zero, 0 meter per second. And what is told is when it reaches here, its velocity is 29.4 meter per second. Now why did this velocity increase is because of the gravitational pull. The earth is attracting it downwards. And this gravitational force always gives an acceleration to any body. It doesn't matter what body it is. It could be a uh, it could be a rubber ball. It could be a cricket ball. It could be a iron ball. It could be a cotton bundle. It doesn't matter. Or it could be a paper sheet of paper rolled it into a ball. And whatever it may be, whatever be the object, always it will be accelerated um, by the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meter per second because of the gravitational pull. So, so I want to just add that acceleration due to gravity, acceleration, acceleration due to gravity is acceleration because of, because of Earth's gravitational pull. Right? It is because of the Earth's gravitational pull, it is pulling it down and when it is pulling it down, at that point, uh, it starts getting accelerated and that acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. Right? Now, there are ways of computing it, calculating it. For that, you should first know Newton's law of gravity. Right? And that is something that you will learn later. And when you learn the Newton law, Newton's law of gravity, you will be able to also derive the acceleration due to gravity considering the mass of the Earth. Right? So, uh, we will look at that later on. Don't worry about it. But assume or take take it for granted that the acceleration due to gravitational pull is always 9.8 meter per second squared. Now, given that, now how what what can I do? So I now know. Now we know v is equal to u plus 80, right? And we know v is equal to 29.4 meter per second, right? You, we know u is equal to zero meter per second right and we also know a is equal to 9.8 so now what I can do I can say 29.4 is equal to 0 plus a into uh, 9.8 sorry uh, 9.8 into t I'm sorry for that 9.8 into t right where I, so t is equal to 29.4 divided by 9.8 which I think is uh, is equal to three seconds. In three seconds, the body will, would have touched the ground, right? So 
pretty straightforward simple question but i only wanted you to understand what is acceleration to gravity acceleration to gravity is the acceleration because of earth's gravitational pull and whatever be the body it could be the satellite a big huge satellite or whatever right or you jumping down and you having a free fall right or your stone uh, uh, stone is uh, is thrown down or uh, you know whatever whatever body having a free fall it is just falling down from top to bottom always will be accelerated by 9.8 meter per second because of the gravitational pull all right excellent now uh let me just quickly save this and then we'll go to t5 save all right and let me clear this clear now let us do uh, one more a uh, couple of more problems okay now the next problem is um a horse right a horse runs a distance of uh 1200 meters now don't forget to convert every all the distances to meters and all the time to seconds right because we'll always do all the problems in si units right so 200 meters uh in three meters uh, th uh three minutes and uh 20 seconds what is the speed of horse so what is this how do you find this speed equal to distance traveled by time taken now what is the time a uh, distance travel is what distance is given here it is 1200 meters what about time taken time taken time is 3 minutes and uh, 20 seconds which is nothing but 3 minutes plus 20 seconds right now what is 3 minutes 3 minutes is 3 into 60 seconds plus 20 so that is 1008 uh, 180 plus 20 which is 200 seconds right now what is uh, the speed speed is 1200 divided by 200 uh, cancel these so 6 meter per second is the speed very simple right so n the only thing you have to think about is you know always convert these kind of things to convert to seconds convert to seconds right always there could be also hours in which case what is it one hour is 3600 so you want to multiply the hours with 3600 so and that will convert it to seconds okay all right now uh, that is the next problem which is the third problem right now let us just save this t6 and say okay cool clear all right now uh, let us look at the next problem so a bus a bus is moving a bus is moving at a speed of 15 meter per second right how much time how much time will it cover how much time it requires it requires to cover a distance of 1.2 kilometers right so again speed is equal to distance by time right now what is asked here the speed is given the distance is given and what is time is what is asked what I can do so which basically means time is equal to 
distance by speed right now what is distance distance is equal to 1.2 kilometers which is 1.2 into 1000 meters right which will be 1200 meters right and uh, speed is given so time will be equal to 1200 divided by 15 right and that will be I think 80 seconds yeah, be 80 seconds right so uh, again a pretty straightforward problem only thing is that uh, here we have been asked to find the time so do these jugglery so if somebody asks you to find distance distance will be speed into time right distance will be speed into time right so all these you can derive out of the same formula okay I hope it's pretty clear now let me just save this uh, T7 all right now let us uh, just clear this and uh, next 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 problem which I want to do okay the odometer the odometer of a car shows shows 80,045 kilometers at start of a journey 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 took 2.5 hours okay end of the journey end of the journey odometer showed showed and the journey the odometer showed eight zero two nine five kilometers what is the average speed the car moved so here you know what the odometer the readings of odometer has been given so from this I can find the distance can't I so distance traveled distance traveled equal to 80295 minus 80045 that's the distance so initial reading is 80045 and odometer is actually showing what's the total distance travel so the initial reading is 80045 and the final reading is 80295 which means I have traveled 850 kilometers 250 kilometers right and what's the time taken time taken was 2.5 hours so what is the speed speed equal to 250 divided by 2.5 which will be 100 kilometer per hour right so it is traveled at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour pretty simple all right okay cool Oops. now uh cancel let me just save this okay so this is a very a simple problem where I've just uh, used the odometer okay fine so uh, I think this problems would have kind of given you a good idea about acceleration velocity and um, you know all that stuff um, I think with this the time and motion session is complete uh, and I think we kind of covered a lot of portions I just want to uh, 
just summarize the whole thing. We covered about what are the different types of motions right rectilinear curvilinear oscillation vibratory and all that stuff we looked at time as a measure right and we looked at what are the devices used for measuring time what are the units of time we looked at speed uh, what, uh, speed as a concept and we looked at uniform speed variable speed we looked at displacement we looked at velocity uh, we looked at uh, you know variable uh, 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 you know uniform velocity variable velocity average velocity we also looked at acceleration and then um, and uh, I think uh, we have also done some problems. So I think with this, uh, we are uh, we are kind of done with this. Okay, T nine. I think uh, we have completed uh, uh, the this thing. Thank you very much. Uh, please keep asking, uh, sending me questions if you have any to my email ID, right? And definitely we'll have the discussion going. Thank you very much.